from elsewhere that still understands it to me. Well, uh, that's an interesting one. But wondering about you're going to do about the centers and yeah, if you move there with maybe to to, to win or not. Yeah, well, that was just as I said to that guy. Now I just think Labour's shown so much improvement in the midfield. And what tends to happen if you move him, then you make you make another change. In other words, you you break something that's 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 basically trying to be you know trying to be put together. So and uh. And he's trained well. Like Cornell, Cornell's trained really well. Cornell, as in Smith, is trained well. Is um, yeah, probably you know as I've been there. It's one of those things where I've been saying to him, just be patient, be patient. You get a chance. Well, now he gets to play in a semi-final against an Irish backline. So, but, I mean that's what sports that's what sports all about for me. You know, is that there's no use me telling a youngster you're going to get a chance, you're going to get a chance, and when it comes, then I can uh, I go another route. So. I mean, he's obviously a little excited. He's been around. He played at SS schools. There's a goal kicker. He's, yeah, he's got some skill. Quick. Um, it probably helps because I know that Jacques and those guys wouldn't expect him to be playing either, which means that there's no video work they can do on him. Yeah. So, yes. yeah, so it's amazing. Maybe who knows, has a game of his life tomorrow and then everyone will know who he is. Of course, um, in terms of this inclusion, in terms of exclusion, uh, also, of course, the news of them, or is the yeah. post-up update a week ago, did he not quite think? Yeah, you know, he, I, I, I probably could have played him. Probably could have, but I, you know, credit to him. He just doesn't want to be a yard slow. Doesn't want to be, doesn't want to be not where he needs to be and, and allow Leinster, you know, to, because, I mean, the way Leinster play is he has to be 100% right to fill the field. You know, him carrying the ball five meters out or him, you know, making a tackle is, is the easy part. But the way Leinster play, as you can see, you know, the way they, I mean, they played to lose. I think Lamont touched the ball 14 times. Um, James Lowe touched it 11 times. 25 times the outside, all those two wingers touched the ball. You have loose forwards that are, that are not filling the field defensively, then you basically help them expose you on the outside. So, um, Credit to him. No. So it, it was actually quite an interesting thing because when I announced that, I said, guys, you know, the one thing I respect is he's, if he's not ready, he said he's not ready. Because a selfish guy could say, I want to be in the semi final, I want to play at home. Um, so, you know, I've, 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 I think that players can respect him as a captain as well because he makes that decision. And it's, you know, it's always easy to say, I agree, I agree, until you're the guy. So that's a very good lesson for us as a team as well that even our captain, if he doesn't think it's the right thing for for the match, then he pulls out. Then, yeah, then maybe next time someone else is going to be in that situation. He's going to also have to make that call. Because how, how crucial is the is the return of uh, Marco Verstappen, especially when you look at the match and yesterday the way they've been played. Also, obviously, got to a few of very good on the ground. Well, uh, how how important is this for you to also have a presence of the crowd with Marco as well as uh, full players will get. Look, I mean, I think they have, so I wasn't sure about the kicking step, but you might be right. But uh, the one thing about them, they hold on to the ball. And if you just, if you're just comfortable giving them the ball, they'll keep it for 20 phases. So you've got to find a way to get it back. Um, and, you know, and you've got to be accurate at the breakdown too. It's easy to say, yeah, we just go hard at the breakdown, but you give a penalty away and they kick it in the corner, you end up defending a five meter line out. Um, so it's nice to have him back because he's got he's got experience. He's played in the World Cup. Yeah. He's also wants to play in two weeks' time. Yeah. He wants to be part of this team that plays against Ireland as well. So yeah. <laughs> you know, I just sense with a guy like him, he's it's almost like a trial for him as well. You know, they got quite you know they got uh, the out because of the suspension. I'm not sure what's happening with CA in terms of you know where where he is. I'm talking about finals and racing metro. Um, so you know he might feel this is a great opportunity for him to show the selectors that he that he can be ready for two weeks time. Um, and how much better can he be, or how much you know how much better can it be for him to play against Josh van der Fleer and Kalen Doris and you know Ryan and the guys who are probably going to be in the Irish team in two weeks time. He asked it from the post. How vindicated do you feel now with the signings of the likes of Devin Williams and Cordell Smith that they come in to help you? Yeah. And it's such a situation that you find yourself in right now and that can slot into a big game like this. I'll tell you what I am most excited about is that 
I've changed the team around enough times to know that if Devon has to play now, it's not like um, and and a Cornell's probably an exception, but he's been training and training and training, and I always knew he was going to get a chance. I just wasn't sure when it was going to come. Um, <laughs> it's not a case of being vindicated. You want a squad that's balanced, and you want a squad that you can interchange. And, and I mean, Devon was on fire in the beginning of the year when Vindy wasn't here. I mean, Devon was one of the stars of our team. So. He also adds a different dimension as well. He's left-footed and he's played fullback, so it means he's going to be good under the high ball because he's, you know, and they, we know they're going to they like to kick up and unders as well. So, yeah, I mean, it's not, I'm not just singing out those two guys. I think the fact that Cameron comes in and starts above Marcel doesn't, you know, some would say that Cameron has played better than Marcel did in the last couple of games as well, but that's what's so nice about interchanging your squad is you, you get comfort out of the fact that it's not seen as as panic or it doesn't seem as you 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 picking players who aren't mentally prepared for what's coming listen jake um looking at this fixture you you would have considered yourselves underdogs with kane and then quickly tell and then you lost them which kind of made the situation yeah. worse you've now lost so we would have been underdogs even if we had you have an it's a bit and so you see a police and and you, I think again, I really am a realist. You guys are underplaying how good Leinster are. No. They, they have, Ken Eddie's got more test caps, you know, and more games for Leinster than I think our whole bench has got together. Uh, I mean, that's the caliber of guy they have. So, so when you say underdogs, I mean, I read in the paper, they said the underdogs. If I spend 10 years at a club and I have 25 internationals and I tell you that we underdogs, you would be panicking. <laughs> But the, the question was, how much worse is your situation now? Uh, well, it's, it's not worse, as in I wouldn't use the word worse. It was much, it would be better if we had those experienced players there. But I'll tell you, that's what the beauty of sport is. Is no one thought Benetton could beat us last week, and they nearly beat us. And so, you know, it just shows that on the day, you, if you play well enough, and you and, and you believe, and you and you have a crack, and that's one thing that I'm going to say to you: we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna have a go. We're not going to die wondering. Um, so, you know, if I sit down, I go, geez, we've lost Kane and we've lost Kirk Lee. And, geez, what happens if we, you know, Marcel's not playing? Well, then, well, then we really got no chance anyway. So, so yeah, I mean, those guys, who knows? Maybe Devon scores the winning try tomorrow. Ends up becoming a household name in Pretoria. That's how quickly sport changes. So... I'm I'm comfortable. I mean, that's the best we've got. That's that's we we've 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 prepared as best we can. We know the challenge. I'm not. I'm really not uh, naive or unrealistic in saying to you this is. Like I said it, and it's quite quite spooky when he says it. But it's probably the biggest club game we've had in a long, 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 long time. Um, and especially because they're coming here in two weeks' time to play a test match. So it's a little bit like playing the Crusaders and next week the All Black or two weeks' time the All Blacks are coming here and two-thirds of the All Black team are playing for the Crusaders. So, And this group's never experienced that. And the Victors and the Buckies and the Pierce Pisses and the Free Dupriers, they, they they got that. These guys have, you know, Rainbow Cups have been against Creekwas, Pumas, Griffins. Yep. And then they go through, you know, the next trophy, whatever, Super Rugby unlocked and they get Lions away and Stormers away and and all of a sudden, four years later, you're getting Leinster with 25 internationals, a World Cup winning coach, um, and a team that's desperate to win. Oh, you know, there's no more I can say about that other than we'll have to see tomorrow where we are. Sorry, give Paco Rosa a Um A lot of the talk since, since Bennett and um, from from you guys about what chances you have of of beating Leinster tomorrow has centered on someone said defense you know did it defend for our lives um Yanis I think said we got to be good at things that you're in a talent for um you know altitude hits hopefully um all of that stuff it's little stuff that's not technical oh. at a technical level what is it that you you think you should be, you should do it to to beat this team? Given that you actually statistically got the better line out, yeah. and they've turned over more turnovers than you have, you've taken turn this and that. Yeah, yeah. I would say the one thing is, well, not the one thing, but the technical stuff is just doing the basics as well as you can. Now, there's, you read any book 
your plans on the road to whatever. You need your set piece, you need your defensive pattern, you need your goal kicker to kick well. Um, yeah, I suppose th those are just, I mean, I know it's such an obvious answer, but against a team like this, and then the last thing is you're going to have to fight for 80 minutes because they're a quality team. I mean, they, they took Toulouse into injury time. And Toulouse got a budget of about 300 million. Um, and, and they've got the best rugby player in the world now in, in that nine, and they've got Intermac at 10, and they took that team into injury time before they lost the game. So without without sitting here, because it almost sounds like you know, like I, whatever I say is wrong, but we 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 still got to grow. We I've been here four years, and I says here too, we played Rickwiz and we played Griffins, and we play, and now it's gone like from that to Leinster at home, and and all these Test players and all these guys don't underestimate. They too want to play for Ireland. They too want to make sure that the Irish coach wants to back them. So we're just going to have to be as good as we can at the things we do. And the answer technically is just do the basics as well as you can. And don't try and and don't try and do things that you that you that you don't need to do, because it's not going to take a it's not going to take um, it's going to take a team effort. Even the bench, I'm going to have to use my bench tomorrow as well, because if they play for 80 minutes, um, then I'm going to expect the bench to be to be part of that that fixture as well. Jake, this, we saw what happened in Dublin when uh, the Insta bench came on. Um, we also saw recently a team like the Warriors um, finishing very strongly in the second half against mm -hmm. the Bulls. Yeah, Loftus. It's almost like you know that storm is coming in the second half. You know, how are you counting? Well, it just depends. I, again, I can only answer when I see what team they're going to pick. You know, hopefully they do the same thing and put their bench, put all the best players on the bench. Yeah. Uh, and when I say hopefully, I'm saying then hopefully we get a good start and they got to play catch up. But. I can't answer until I know how they're going to... I mean, that game specifically, they put all the main guys on the bench and then they... When we put our bench on, then basically our bench, who, who were guys that and weren't our number one, were playing their number ones. So which you think about it is is a massive difference. So I can only answer, Kribus, on I don't know what they're going to do. I mean, I'm only C, but, but I don't... They're so good, and they're so good and so talented and so experienced... That, I mean, if Kalen Doris plays or Conan plays, does, then which one do you think I'd prefer to play against in the first half? You know, and if Maloney starts and Maloney, you know, or Ryan starts at lock, does it really, you know, does it really make a difference? Because I think they're so oiled and they're so, um, and I, and you know, I read something the other day and I listened to it. These guys have played in the last three years. These guys have played in three European Cup games. This group of players, this group of players have played in the World Cup. This group of players have played in. URC playoffs. This group of players have played in Six Nations and won Six Nations. Now, when you add that up, Quibus, geez, that's an incredible fast tracking of skill, experience, and compared to Krikwas away or Pum Pumas at home, or you know, that's where that's what we that's that's been up. No one's fault. It's just trying to compare apples with apples. This group of players have won Six Nations, played in the World Cups, played three European Cup finals, played in. Geez, they, I mean, they, and all they do is they change the color of their jersey. They go blue one week, green the next week. Now, that's a wonderful position to be in. It's a little bit like when I got to the Brumbies and the days of Gregan, Larkham, Mortlock, Roth, you know, uh, that team, Finnegan, um, um, Jeremy Paul, Ben, I mean, Bill Young. You know, that, that team played for Australia. They played for Brumbies and uh, Super Rugby and then they swapped to gold jerseys and they played for, it's no different to what's happening in Ireland. And, and I, and I say it to you because that's where I want to get to. I want to get to when we run out the tunnel, whether Alri's on the bench or whether Marcel's on the bench or whether Cameron Honecorn and Oakley is a Springboks on the bench or whether Gumedi, who's now in the Springboks squad's on the bench, will be in the same position. But we're not there yet. But mm. one thing about sport, which is fantastic, there's no give it about who should win and all that because that's why sport is such an amazing thing because... You know, you've been in situations or in stadiums where you didn't think the guy had a chance and he ended up winning. Good. Um, this came here, this season you've sort of applied, in a sense, to the world from the previous season. It's got to this point. Tomorrow's game, how much of a, a test is it for you, okay, for you to learn and see where the crew is and also see where you are, you know, as a coach, I think, at this point. Well, that's what I want to take out of tomorrow. We play at home. We've done all the hard yards. And I said to you guys, 
many times the last couple of weeks. If I'd said to you, listen, Bulls come second on the log. This year we play Benetton in the quarterfinals and Leinster in the semifinals. There are not many guys that were involved in this club that would have said no. So we've, we've, you know, we've, we've, we've managed to get an improvement of where we are as a group. Um, but we want to win. I, mean, I don't want you now to hear my voice and think that I'm that I'm you know content that you know that if we we lose to a very good Leinster team that therefore everything's fine. I, mean, I want to win, um, but it's always a measurement for us as a club. You know, it's uh, we want to improve. Have we improved? I'm sure we've improved. Have a guy like David Krill. When I hear that, I get really excited because people are talking about David Krill. He's not even in the he's not even in the camp. So that's the kind of guy that we've got as a backup. Um, so it's a measurement. It is a measurement for us as a club. And and to be really honest, boys, we 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 don't really have much to lose, do we? I mean, we don't really have much to lose. We we're playing against a quality team. They beat us by forty points the last time we played. It could have been worse. Um, but that's also sometimes it's also a bit of a blessing because we can actually play and 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 play like we like we want to just you know enjoy it. But I. Leicester's desperation to win a close football to win and to win. Is it something that you can sort of use to inspire the game to the key sort of first league in there to work around that? Yeah, well, Jacques won trophies, so you know, you'll know how to win trophies. Let's be fair, yeah. I mean, people always talk about that, guys. They said the All Blacks choked the every World Cup and then they won two in a row. So, I mean, you know, one, thing about, one thing about sport is going to change. They, they're too good a team, they're too well coached, they're too. You know, signing and I go again, Adria and Jordy Barrett next year. I mean, geez, guys. I mean, eventually they're gonna. You're not gonna always be able to use the excuse about these guys can't win. I think their win record is about ninety percent. Think about it. A lot of these guys could play. You know, some of these players could have played the whole year and never lost a game for Leinster or even Ireland. I don't know that they lose in the Six Nations. And I'm not sure, but I mean, if they didn't, I mean, they could spend the whole season where some boys who played played for Leinster and for Ireland probably haven't lost a rugby game this year. There's not many guys that play professional rugby that can that can say that at the end of the season. Coach, I'm not sure about the ticket sales, but then how are you eyeing you got uh, Pretoria, the Zervive, if I'm using Grace, um, tis out. And, and I'd love it to be sold out. I told you guys the week. I mean, one thing that I know what it's like, and again, I've been long enough in the game to know that when you arrive at Loftus and there's 50,000 people here, it's an incredible advantage for a team for our home team um, but you know it's, it's difficult it's just difficult because a test match here in two weeks times middle of the month people don't have the money and you know but but what I am hoping for is that the sort of diehard supporters will bring their families and, and they will be here to support the team because one thing we, we do need is we need as many supporters here to be to be behind the team and Jack we've spoken a lot about you guys being underdogs but on the contrast, you guys have got a very proud record here at Loftus. I think only Munster's beaten you in your yours here at Loftus. So how much of your talk to to the players is about them coming to your house for, and making sure that they understand that they're playing? Yeah, well, Brendan, yeah, that's why I suppose one goes one goes hand in hand. If we get a full house here, we get all these these you know fanatical bull supporters, which we know are so behind the team. Um, then it is a massive advantage, and we will talk about. It. We don't want to be losing, you know, in front of our crowd or on our field anyway. It's something that, you know, over the last four years, I think we might have a ninety percent win rate at home in all competitions. So it's it's not something we want to give up. Um, but we, I don't. I must say, I don't labour that point to the players. I think they they instinctively know how, how nice it is to be at home. You know, the change room, your own home, your own bed. You know your own your pre-match meal in your own in your own you know in your own restaurant. It's a, I mean, it would be a very different challenge for us if I was sitting now in Dublin, uh, about to play at the RDS or at the Viva. And that that is, I think all teams all teams that are that are doing well in any competition pride themselves on what they do at home. I mean, I, as I said, I'm not sure in Leinster, but I also think there haven't been many teams that are, I think me probably the last team that have gone to Leinster and won as well. So I think any good sporting team. Takes pride in the fact that their their home games are are must win games. In fact, if we had beaten Munster, we would have come first. It just shows you how important winning at home is. And and just now, if if I mean 
tomorrow goes Hugo's way and, and, and the ball bounces the right way and you guys win the game. Would you consider that a bigger win than in Dublin two years ago? Because you're in with the group, is uh, it? It would be, it would be, it would be, it would be close. Because I think the, the reason that game was so big, it was away from home, and it was with a really, really young, inexperienced team. If I go through that team, you won't believe who we picked. I mean, I look at it. I mean, I don't want to, you know, a little anyone that was in that group. But if I compare what we have now compared to that team, we've 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 grown. I mean, guys have got two, three years more experience. Guys have have played. You know, in combinations a bit longer, so it's difficult to say. Would it be bigger? I think it would be bigger in the contest context because of of where we are as a group, and it would mean so much more to us to build on that. But it won't take away from the fact that what we achieved there that day, with with what we had and the experience we had, was was massive. I was I mean, Kafsa, Jake, an editor and anti chip being uh, underdogs and everything. So at the end of the day, do you consider that guts, passion, and definitely decision making will be the three factors that will carry you through? Yeah, Carl, I, 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 th I think three of th those three things are definitely, they must be given. I mean, I, I don't think you're, you're going to get through this game without those three things. But then there's also, as I said, the accuracy and the, and the understanding of, of what's coming and mentally understanding that this this is going to be, it's going to be a test. You know, one of the things about why they call it a test match in rugby is because it's a test of who you are, what your team is, who you are individually. And I would think this is as close to a test match. This is by far the biggest club game the Bulls have played uh, in a long, long, long time because it's a it's a test for us. And those things are important, of course, but... But we're going to have to be accurate because the one thing, you know, the one thing about Leinster is they get a penalty in the first three minutes. They aren't going for polls. They're going to go to the corner, and that's the difference. They, 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 they want to make sure they make a statement early on and almost, almost win the game. That's a little bit like I, 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 I use an example, and I don't know if you guys follow golf, but I tell you what used to happen in the old days. Golf is played over four days, and they used to play the first two days to make the cut. And then the tournament basically started on the Saturday. That's how golf used to be. So everyone would play Friday, Thursday, Friday, make the cut, and then anyone could win the competition on a Saturday and Sunday. Tiger Woods arrived, and he went, hang on, this doesn't make sense. So he went 10 under the first day, 11 under the second day, and he was 21 under after two days, and the tournament was over because all these other guys were trying to make the cut. Um, and so what I'm saying is Leinster have proved that. What they do is they go 20 points up, and they go, okay, now let's see how good you are and see whether or not you can beat us. So the guts and all that is, yes, you need that. You're going to fight till the end, but we also got to be accurate and understand that, you know, Leinster are a quality team. If you give them 20 points start, it's, uh, it's a very, very difficult place to be because they will, they will, you know, they're good enough, experienced enough to actually put you away. On oh, Bambi? Oh, yes. It's good. You, uh, a lot of talk has been that, you know, it's, this game is, has the test, test match atmosphere that's out against South Africa. And there are a lot of guys in the squad, like Cameron Adderkorn, David Creel, Ambrose, also come back into form now. How do you sort of handle the mental aspect for all those guys knocking on the street off or going into the Serie A? Yeah. yeah, it's a really good question. Because I, I just stress to them that they're not going to make the Springbok team by being individuals and playing trials. So... You know, that, that is my message to them. You're not going to make the team because you're trying to play for yourself. And it's going to stand out. So just do what you have to do. Stick to what the team wants to do. Um, yeah. Because it's natural. Mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, again, every kid is like when you, you know, I've coached long enough to know you go to Craven Week trials and some guy arrives with his purple socks so that the selectors can see him and all he wants to do is make sure that he... And I don't... My message to them is they, they've done enough this year to be noticed. They don't need to... To do anything where they where they try and make a name for themselves, play on their own. Um, they, we've got to trust that what we put together as a group is going to be good enough, and that's probably the thing that we, we can win with. We can win because if our group is connected and 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 they and they work for each other and they work together, like the captain saying, "I'm not ready this weekend," then that's a massive statement for us as a club. Uh, uh, coach. Uh...
last week, I think it's this week on Monday, there is a statement that was released by, by the Bulls, and he did utter with such as, uh, what is the point of playing home ground if you are not going to use it as an advantage? Correct. So what Fafos means is that, yes, most of the time, an advantage of playing at home, it's having a lot of supporters coming through. Yep. But what are other advantages of playing at home despite expecting you know, the number of supporters coming to? Okay, what I did mean is I would like it to be full and the supporters to be behind us. So that is given. But as I said earlier, sleep in your own bed, you know, stay in your own change room, uh, same things you do during the week. You don't have to travel, um, you know, spending time with your family, doing things that you would do in a normal week. Are things that I'm, are that, those are things that are are important to players as well. You know, we had to fly and we had to fly with three different airlines, whatever the story is, and go to three different venues and arrive at different times. And it, it, it's obviously not, not you don't get an advantage in doing that. That's what I meant as well. And the last one, Coach, uh, I stand to be corrected. I, I believe in the first year of CK of the year, you lost the field one to three. Yes. And stuff. Yes. And you weren't going to be there in the semi final. Yes. So from the assessment that you, that you made from both both games, what is that that you did right in the semi final for which you applied right in the semi final, which you did apply in the first game that you played that was the BUIC, and must you expect you applying the same uh, playing the same strategy playing at your next uh, in again tomorrow? Are you working for Linster? No, no, okay. <laughs> No, no, what, what we did is it's very simple, and I'm going to say this to you. The first game, 31-3, we did things that allowed them to to do things well. The second game, we took those things away and didn't give those things to them. So that's basically what we worked out with them is you don't want to give them what they're good at. You want to try and take those things away. And it's easier said than done, but that's what you want to do. You don't want to, you don't want to give them the things that they can really do well against you. Of course, thank you.